What's going on, guys? Good morning. This is Tyler with Everyday EDC. Today I'm going to do a different style of unboxing. I have five knives that I already unboxed four of them, but due to the integrity of the challenge, I can't really carry them. I've flicked them a couple times. Some I'm more excited about than others. And then I have one to unbox. So I'm going to kind of just... This is not a review. This is just me kind of like sharing my first impressions of these knives. I'm basically going to tell you my initial thoughts because, it's, you know, there's one or two of them that I flicked a little bit more than others, but it was just flicking. <laughs> it was just the tip, I swear. It doesn't even count. No, but it was just like, I, I didn't carry it even, you know what I mean? But some are more addicting than others and more exciting than others. So without further ado, let's get to it and we'll kind of talk about it. I'll basically show you the knife and tell you what I first think about it before really carrying it. I did put them back in their boxes to kind of like waste more time, I guess. <laughs> in hindsight, I'm looking at it and I'm like, why did you put them back in the box? It's not like, that's stupid. Uh, yeah, alright, so this is the first one I wanted to open up. This may be probably, um, this is the Kaiser SLT. <laughs> it is a John Gray design who I believe is a self-defense guy. Don't quote me on that smooth half of it went in your mouth half of it went on the floor nicely done um pretty cool oversized phillips pivot right here first and foremost cool as in like i don't like it <laughs> but cool as in it's different uh part of the reason i don't like it is actually really shallow uh that's gonna be a pain in the ass because nobody has like a chopped off flat head right where you chop off the tip and you just have the like the cross no it's like you have that one that with like the point that goes in because most screws go in. This is flat, and so I don't know if I like that in the first place. Probably won't ever be an issue. Uh, I like that it's different, but at the same time, I don't know. And maybe it's different with these giant oversized pivots. This might be because this is a John Gray design. Maybe this is John Gray's signature. I don't know. Um, pretty wild, long, large milled pocket clip. I don't have a problem with it. It's an off color, which... Nothing else on this knife is that color, so I don't know if I care that it's an accent color or not. Um, I'm bringing it up because it's a thing, but I don't know that I really even care. <laughs> Detent on this guy, well, first centering's perfect, and these edges are really nicely rounded. So, Kaiser, I, I mean, they're making these much larger... Somebody there? They're making these much larger than average, like, titanium folders. This thing is pretty freaking large. So when I open it up, yeah, the detent's really strong. It's a very large blade. And to put this into perspective, let us get, uh, I'm trying to find a good knife for comparison here. Here's your PM3. So as you can see, this thing's a pretty damn large knife. All right, so this is a size comparison with the PM2, or PM3. Para 3, a little off the game. So as you can tell, it's a relatively large knife. This is a really decent looking blue anno, and this blade shape is, I'm actually a fan of this blade shape. This blade shape's pretty cool. It's kind of like a sheep's foot, like it, the way it comes in. We can call it a drop foot, if you will. Um, it's just, it's a cool looking blade shape. There's no back and forth. It is stupid solid, okay? The action feels really nice on the way down but I can tell you that detent is a wicked strong. Um, but the problem is that with that detent being wicked strong, here, that's what that's what the out me on the lock bar, right? Uh, I feel like if I were to try and bend that lock bar, like I feel like this is one of those that you're either going to get it or not get it. Um, I might try to adjust this, but I'm worried that if I do, I'm going to totally lose that detent strength, and nothing pisses me off more than like when you can shake a knife out by like sneezing. A two. Right? Like one of those things. So, yeah. So anyways, this is the Kaiser SLT. In hand, it feels actually pretty damn comfortable. Um, not really a choke up position. They did the plunge grind really well right here. And the edge is pretty nice. Let's get you guys a quick cut test and then move on to the next. I'll give you like an overall. Oh yeah. Okay. So they did a pretty damn good job with this, with this edge too. Overall, I'm pretty excited to carry this knife. I'm not sure if I love it or hate it. It's one of those. Like, it's right in between to where I could, like, fall off the map and not look at it again. 
But it's also one that I could see myself carrying a lot because I really do love what they did with this blade shape. In the end, it's it's a it's a design preference at first because aesthetically, you know, with with the way that they've done everything and the quality wise, uh, they freaking knocked it out of the park with the Kaiser SLT. But I'm telling you guys, it's much larger than it appears. Objects and mirrors. Object and mirror may be larger than it. Never mind. All right, on to the next one. For, forgot how that sentence goes. Okay, so this next one, actually, let's go on to the unboxing because they're kind of related. All right, try not to make this 10 hours long. I was going to do this one video, and I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. I should know that people do this stuff. It's, this might be interesting and kind of catch up with some of the stuff that I was behind on, and then I'm like, I'm rushed in the damn video. All right, this is why they might be together because this is another Kaiser. Man. Your little skirt's been a little dirty. You need to get that thing washed. All right. This is one that I got off of Reddit. And I got a sick deal on this one, so I had to check this out. So this is more of a realistic size right off the gate. This, I believe, is the Kaiser Guru. I think that's what the name of it is. Let me see here. Yeah, the Kaiser Guru. So, I got just a really sick deal on Reddit on this. That's why I got it. He did Anno the Pocket Clip, which he did a pretty cool job. It's got this cool, like, lightning finish to it, which I know how to Anno. I know how to get a cool finish. I don't know how to do a lightning finish, so that's cool. Um, came perfectly centered. This is a really, really nice size. Uh, I already put it away. I shouldn't have put it away. I don't know why I put it away. I'm going to show it at the end or something. I'll show you in comparison with the SLT real quick. I did drink an energy drink right before, or I'm sipping on one now, and it's one of those C4s. It's not like just like a lame energy drink. Like, this thing gets you jacked. So I'm probably all over the place. So this is the SLT next to the Guru. Let's get this box out of here. While the SLT is brand new, the Guru is not, and nice. So this has a really, really strong detent as well. Kaiser's detents have been... Uh, pretty wicked strong, but this one's almost like it's probably because it's broken in. Ooh, did not want to go over that. And then this says Matt Dagnan, which is the designer right there on the spine. This is the first time in hand, and honestly, this is a really, really, really good EDC size. I really like this choke up position. Um, action wise, it's stupid smooth, uh, very clicky. And this is done uh, really nicely. And I really like this sheep's foot design. This is like a traditional sheep's foot style blade, but it's almost snub nosed a little bit more than most sheep's foot that I'm used to. And ah, man. Uh, so, Kaiser, you're killing it with this design. I know the Guru is a little bit older, while the SLT is relatively new. Um,. But, oh, goodness. And I heard a lot of good things about the Guru, and that makes sense because in hand, this I could see this being, like, the perfect EDC for the size type, style knife. Uh, really, really cool. So no back and forth. And I know they made, I think they made a ton of different models of the Guru. Uh, Jake was saying that the uh, action on his, what did he say? I want to say he ordered this. And the action was so stiff that, like, he couldn't even flick it out, and it was on thumb studs. Um, it was that guru model. So, I can say I don't have that issue. And actually, actually mine's, like, stupid ultra smooth. Um, if you guys have that issue where it won't even flick, I'm going to go on a limb and say it's not even your bearings. <laughs> like, you can, you can over-tighten your pivot, I guess but it's probably your detent being so strong. Because I'm going to guess if you have a trouble flipping it, while you go to flip it, it only goes half the way, and it's difficult to break that detent even. Um, yeah, so that's just... If you guys have any trouble with that stuff, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll try to walk you through it and help out. But ultimately, the Guru, I like this knife much more than the SLT for practical purposes already. Um... 
great build construction. So what Kaiser's doing really well is they're putting this nice, like, it's almost like a textured finish on here. I don't know what kind of finish that would be. It's just, it's not raw. Maybe it's like a blasted finish. It's not, it doesn't seem to be stonewashed, but it's, it's textured enough that it's not ultra slick. It's just okay. It gives me a project. That's all. I enjoy sharpening. Uh, but, I mean, they're doing so awesome with their finishes and looks. And they're taking two basic things. Um, I don't think this has any milling on the inside. Nope. And I don't think the Guru has any milling on the inside. But it doesn't count because they drilled through it. Uh, they're taking two basic things. S35, titanium, and flippers, really. And, and just doing them really well. Let me take a look at this pocket clip again. Just a basic pocket clip, nothing special. Um, <laughs> I appreciate the fact that he added that to a raw titanium knife. But, you know, they're just doing it so well. Okay. Since uh, I'm going to actually leave this one for second to last. And then we're going to go into this. How long are we going on? 14 minutes already? We're only through two. All right, so this one is my second SOG. My first SOG is sitting right here, and this is the Terminus XR. Um, I wanted to comment, somebody, uh, who was it? Shit, I'm sorry, I was reading your comment and I forgot your name. Um, you, you mentioned that you had this and didn't like it, the Terminus XR, um, and, and you thought that it felt cheap. So first and foremost, I don't have any blade play. I don't have any up and down on this, and the action is pretty stupid. Um, is it refined? No, um, it doesn't feel refined to me. And, and yeah, these, these overlays or these scales feel kind of cheap, but I think they're a cheap G10. I think it's like a peel ply G10, but it feels cheap. But at the same time, the liners are so thick. This does feel like while it feels cheap, it doesn't feel like it's going to self-destruct. I think it's going to actually hold up pretty well. That's what I meant by that. Kind of wanted to give you a response via video. So this, I, so another person who commented, I'm really bad at remembering names, guys. You're like, oh, I got the SOG, I think it was on my Titanium Penguin. You're like, I got the SOG SIG, and it's, it's a best knife for the price and maybe the best knife ever. Okay. <sighs> so I think I bought it after you mentioned that comment, and I know it's new. So this is the SOG SIG. Uh, this is FRN, and I believe this is just like a texturing on the FRN. It's kind of like a furry texturing. That's cool. Uh, I already like the pocket clip over the damn SOG pocket clip going on here. They're both deep carry. This one's much more deep carry, but this one's really damn deep carry. You got the American flag, America. And then just like some weird texturing on there, and that's it. No, you're not flashing. No shit. I'm an idiot. I, for some reason, thought this was built by SOG. Nope, this is built by Hogue. No wonder it doesn't have the SOG shit going on there. And no wonder I love the construction because... Uh, where's my other Hogue? I had the Hogue uh, Micro Flip as my first knife. I haven't had any other Hogue, right? That's why I think I looked at this one. I'm an idiot. Uh, the Hogue Sig. But this is the Micro Flip. And while I don't really like the ergonomics because it's just too damn small, I there's something about the construction that I'm like, whoa. So this is the Hogue Sig. And that was a bad flip. That wasn't the knife. That was a second bad flip. It's the sideways nature. This is FRN scales that are seamed right here. Not seamed as in like they're uh, integral. It's just that's where they meet up. You have two liners that are recessed really nicely, and then you have a four-way pocket clip going on there. In hand, though, um, yeah, <laughs> this, this is, I don't use this term often in description of a knife. I usually say it's pretty good. It's not hand melting. It's this. Um, guys, this is pretty damn hand melting. Yes, you feel the FRN scales, but there's something about the way they did these FRN scales that make me not give a shit and almost appreciate the FRN. It's just weird. Uh, I, I, <laughs> ooh, this haul, man, I've been, I've been talking about it. Like we are, I'm not doing good. My finger, it's my finger. It's not the knife. Um, we are in an era, in a time period where 
everything that is just coming out and and i mean even this i'm i'm not complaining about the slt i just and i love the blade shape i just don't know that it's one that i like these are just fantastic knives. They're just so good. And it's just so wild that all this shit is coming out and you're like, that's the one. And then the next one comes out and you're like, that's the one. And then the next one comes out and you're like, I'm out of money, but one day you'll be the one, right? It's just so cool that today's day and age we have this. So very, very nice. We got this recessed liners into the FRN scales, which that's cool. Um, da, 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 da. Again, these are first impressions. This is in K320. Is that what it is? No, S30V. I thought... Ah, I quit. K320. I wasn't even sure what that was. I was thinking K110. All right. I quit. So this is an S30V. And it better be because I think this was like 140 or 150 bucks. Uh, the one thing that I'm noticing right off the bat... You did the opposite of a plunge grind. You just left it. I don't know that I like that. Now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> like your edge looks fantastic. But what the fuck is going on there? Hmm. Anyways. Uh, so this opening hole. It works. Alright. It's not the most accessible. Other than that. Those are my only two complaints. I think this thing's freaking fantastic. This is a great great knife. Sorry about the confusion earlier. I don't have an excuse. I called this a SOG. I called this a, a blade steel that doesn't exist. I was at K320. Wait a second. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, the SOG SIG, I can tell... It's, this is really difficult on the camera. I can tell you guys this thing is phenomenal. Uh, really, really good. Came wicked sharp out of the box. That edge is really nice. <laughs> I just don't know what the hell's going on with the reverse plunge grind. It's like a belly button now. You're definitely gonna have to put a plunge. You're definitely gonna have to put a plunge grind in this thing, because the more you sharpen it, the more you're just gonna run into that thing. I don't understand that logic. Ah, that that has quickly become. I just noticed that that has quickly become my biggest pet peeve with this knife. Everything else about this knife is just phenomenal, and then you have that. Okay, next. I don't, see, I, I feel ill-prepared for this. <laughs> I know it's a first impressions. It's not a review. It's just me talking about this shit, but I feel ill-prepared. I feel rushed. I don't like feeling rushed, but I'm enjoying this at the same time. This is another Kaiser. You can thank Neves Knives for this motivation. No, there was no personal contact of him being like... Do it. It was just, I watch him so much. He's been talking about that freaking roach so much that I'm like, yo, I'm going to buy the titanium roach. And I did. So this is the titanium roach. Now, this thing is a massive knife just out the gate. Here's the SLT, which is also a massive knife. These things are the same exact size. So, yeah, it's 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 a pocket hog in itself. Um, it's got this cool little roach clip. Look at that little roach clip. Uh, really nice. That's probably why this is a pocket hog. Titanium backspacer that goes like the full length of the blade. That's or the length of the scales. That's pretty nice. Really massively contoured. Um, I do have an opinion on the ergonomics on this just from holding it. I haven't used it. Uh, this flipper tab here is oh so gentle. Like this feels like the detent is perfectly tuned. This one feels like it's too strong. Now, the difference is, let's take a look at the flipper tabs real quick. I have more leverage on this flipper tab. And although this one feels smooth, it feels pointier. This one, on the roach, they put some jimping, and it, I, like, this is so enjoyable to flip. This is the one that I've been flipping a little bit too much, um, despite being on the 30-day challenge with my uh, CRKT Huron. I don't know, we're like halfway through it or something. I haven't used these, but I have flipped them out of the box. Like, So, all right, so ergonomically, I don't know how to deal with this. Like, this this definitely scrunches your hand, but I think you're supposed to put your pinky here. And that's, that's just okay, but choked up. This feels insane. Insane. There's no back and forth, no up and down. 
Uh, this is an S35 VN blade. Sorry, the SLT was S35. I believe the Guru was S35 and the Hogue Sig was a S30. Um, but yeah, so there's no need for a sharpening choil because they did this really generous. This this is how you do a finger choil. This thing's just generous. Like So I could choke up and see how all my meat's in there, like on the fatter part of my finger, and it feels comfortable. This feels great. Um, but overall, this is a really unique knife that... I got because I, I watch his channel a lot. He's been talking about it a lot. And I started to like the shape of the one he was carrying. And I just love this blade shape. So this blade shape's kind of a spear point. It almost lines up with that center pivot. But it really reminds me of the Praxis. Let's see. So... See, Prax is a little bit more scary, skinny and long. This one's a little bit more short and fat. But it does remind me of the Praxis. It does kind of remind me of like the Wee Malice. And I'm so attracted to that blade shape just as an aesthetic. There's nothing else other than the aesthetic of it that I'm attracted to. So first impressions though, locked up super solid. There is no, like this thing is so just tank. This thing screams tank. That blade stock probably coming in at about 150, 160 thousandths. That's a really thick blade stock. Uh, perfectly centered. Yeah, this is this is cool. Uh, I did kind of break it in, like force break it in. I took it and held the the frame lock right here and rocked it for about two minutes. That's why you're getting such a smooth action, but it broke in so nice, so quick. All right. All in all, I'm actually excited that I can cut paper. Um, I'm actually excited that I <clears throat> got a chance to check this out and chose to check this out because I really do like it. And it's outside of my wheelhouse. I wouldn't have picked up a handle like this, but I'm going to carry it whenever I get a chance after this challenge, damn it. And I think it's gonna grow on me. But feeling this guru in hand, this thing's gonna grow on me too. I, I don't know, Kaiser, obviously I got three of them. Um, you know, I, I kinda jumped on the Concept bandwagon when they first came out and Concept's cool, but Kaiser's doing a lot of cool shit. Last but not least, whew, this one may have become <laughs> something big uh i haven't used it i've just felt it and it it's so nice Ow. i need to put a reminder before you guys are like yo fucking use your knives it's a, this is a first impressions and i got i'm doing a 30 day challenge with this so i'm not really using these and i'm not using these all right so this is the massive the great the zt 308 Ah, so I got this used, uh, so this isn't brand new, but, uh, so the action on this is incredible. The one thing I have noticed is this pivot's annoying, and you gotta have something kind of special. You could probably do it with, like, a pair of pliers or something, but, so it's locked up perfectly, no up and down. This frame lock right here, which, I'm gonna guess that this is titanium, because it does feel kind of cold, but the, but it's kind of weird. So the ZT560 felt the same way. I thought it was like a G10, but they put the same texturing on there, and it turned out to be like this weird titanium. Uh, on I didn't like it on the 560. It felt cheap. On this one, it definitely does not. And then on the other side, they do have a liner, which I'm not sure if that liner is steel. Yes, the liner is steel. So... I don't know if it's steel underneath a titanium scale. I have to look this up because this is hard to tell with this texturing that's on there. Either way, it won't phase me though because... Uh, so we have some Hinder-esque backspacers going on there. Kind of. Let's see. Do, do, do. See those? There's three of them. Lanyard hole. Just a generic pocket clip. In hand, this feels really good. Oh, we talk about confidence inspiring. Oh, yeah. The Tiger Stipe Pratton, I'm not a huge fan of, but it is what it is. We got serial number 217145, whatever. 
USA 20 CV. Uh, then the serial number going on right there. And then on this side just says ZT. I don't know what design this is, but I know this is a more popular design, and I get it. This thing is stupidly huge. Oh my gosh, is this massive. But, when you take a look here, ah, I mean, it's just massive. But it feels so smooth, it's confidence inspiring, and this neutral ergonomics feels really good. Like, this is probably the best feeling massive knife that I've ever felt. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, you cannot get it to slip here. This frame lock, what I was mentioning before, we do have a titan or a stainless steel insert there, but it's super light. Like this is enjoyable to do. The flipper, enjoyable. Like that, like you can. Ooh, I was gonna say you can fail it. Maybe not. You guys see that? There we go. All right, so you can fail it, but it was obviously an attempt. The flipper's a little bit more aggressive because we do have some sharp jimping on there. Uh, I'm assuming this is on, this is definitely on bearings. But all in all, and it's just this generic drop point, but all in all, this thing is sick. Oh, man, I got this on the secondary market because I saw the dude drop his price again, and I'm like, frick it, I heard about this thing several times. So real quick, let's do a cut test. He's got a pretty sharp edge on here. It's not cutting it out there. There we go. Uh, pretty sharp edge on this thing. And this thing is... The blade stock's not entirely too massive. The blade stock probably looks smaller than the roach, actually. Let's see here. See, the brooch looks like a bigger blade stock. Um... I would say this is probably 150 thousands, maybe 140 thousands, but all in all, super, super cool. I'm super stoked on this. I'm super stoked on this. I'm really liking this as like an EDC. I'm really liking this as an EDC and poor old, uh, you don't even make it to the screen. Poor old Kaiser SLT is just kind of like, eh. <laughs> that's the only one I don't care about but then again I do because this blade shape is so nice that blade shape is wicked fantastic it's probably the best blade shape on uh, the table here so anyways sorry about the long drawn out thing I'm gonna probably chop a little bit of this up but this is my five first impressions three Kaisers one Hogue and one ZT made some mistakes along the way but it was fun and I'm so excited to carry these and share these with you guys my name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking rest of your day. Let's see if we can zoom out and see them all. Oh, oh, behind the scenes. You're not allowed to see that. That's my that's my box. <laughs> that's what she said. All right. Uh, inappropriate. Have a great day, guys. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. This is my Patreon. This is my Instagram, EverydayEDC underscore 77. I'm going to do a special shout out to all the Patreons. John K, Sammy, Eggs and Ham, Jason M, Dogtooth, Kaiba, Mickey, Wolf, and Captain Steve. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great freaking day.